Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I'm Jane, otherwise known as Jane the Guide, because I, I guide people to hopefully a more loving, abundant, creative life. Um, I have not been posting on here on the YouTube very much lately because I've had this super awesome opportunity to teach virtual classes for a nonprofit that I have been supporting for a couple few years now called Promise Resource Network. And um, I get to talk about wellness and alignment and recovery and recovering from like the program and living a creative heart-centered life. Um, sorry if you hear background noises. I have my window open because it's a lovely day. So, um, but I have been sharing so much almost daily on that platform that I haven't been on here. And I wanted to share this because, um, yeah, I want to, I'm, I'm called to share what I'm about to share. So hopefully it's a service. Um, my intention with this is to grow and flow more love into this earthly realm and hopefully inspire everybody <laughs> to, to live a creative, loving life. So something that has been coming up for me that I want to share because I feel that it is uh, congruent to what's happening in the cosmos with all the planetary movements, all the retrogrades, all of the movement on the actual earth herself, the Schumann resonance has been spiking a lot, a lot more frequently, um, and a lot higher of a, of a resonance, of a frequency than normal. Just enough to get on our nerves, <laughs> clear out our nervous system. It's amazing. Anyway, so something that has been coming up that I feel like is coming up for a lot of people. So anyway, I'll just jump in. So a lot of the things that have been coming up for, coming through me, coming into my reality are um, memories of my past, of the other timelines, right? So mind you, as we continue ascending and clicking into, I call it clicking into higher vibrational consciousness or welcoming in higher vibrational consciousness into our embodiment, walking along in this embodied system. Um, we, um, we, we get to like recognize things, see things differently, see things in a new perspective, right? Because energetically speaking, it's gonna activate um, our chakras, you know, with, with different consciousness, with different data, with different information so that we feel grounded and connected on the new earth so that we can feel sensual and creative and fluid on the new earth so that we can have the willpower and the courage and the emotions to share freely on the new earth so that we can love in this divine connection and relationship to others, ourselves, the planet, all living beings everywhere on the new earth so that the words that we speak have the infinite intelligence and the cosmic consciousness so that the words that we speak are in light or in that high vibration for the new earth so that our third eye can see with clarity so we can have a clear perspective that all is one and one is all that we are and that we um it's what we're made to to live in i feel um but activating that consciousness within that so that we can see clearly on the new earth plane activating and opening up our crown chakra, connecting us to the divine, to the oneness, to all of the data, the information, so that we can understand how to move into the new earth realm. So to do that, this is what I'm picking up on, to do that energy that's coming in with the planets and their movement and what, the, what are they gonna do in their dance and their cosmic dance, is so that we can take all of this energy and let it pour into us and then embody it. When it pours into us, this is the direction I see it, it's technically not pouring down, it's not really coming up, whatever. I just, this is the direction that I see it, so I share it. So anyway, so this energy is pouring in and it's like pouring in a liquid. If there's anything that needs to come up, it does. 
And for the majority of human, what I feel like is coming up are the things from the past, right? Because it's what we've already lived through. And as we move into this new earth realm, timelines dissolve, right? So I've been seeing a lot more of timelines folding. I've seen timelines unfolding. I've experienced both, both experiences as had been one and then it unfolded and I make I've experienced now two not the same but the same in reflection of each other and I've also had experiences where I had been here and then I was seeing this experience here but now I'm having the one experience so timelines are dissolving we're remembering that the time is only now as we do that, anything that's not in congruency or in alignment with the higher vibrational frequency of the of the new earth, this fifth dimensional consciousness, comes up, comes to light. So all this stuff from my past has been coming up. We've all been dealing with our past. Like, that's what we're all in recovery from. Yesterday, childhood, five years ago, whatever, this past stuff, that's what we're recovering from. What I'm feeling is happening now is that I am, I'll keep it on the eye, I am experiencing my childhood from an extremely different perspective. The things in my childhood are coming up and they're playing out. The way I'm seeing this, it's very interesting. So you know how like right before you die or if you've had a near-death experience, you see your whole life flash before you almost like a movie screen, a movie reel, like a film. It's like I've been experiencing that with my childhood. As I'm experiencing that with my childhood, this film, I am not seeing it as I was living it, which is the way I would see it before. For example, um, my brother used to joke around and told, told me that I was adopted, told me that I was from Africa, that my real name wasn't Jane, that it was something else. And um, for years, he told me this as a joke. and. It was, they, they uh, he and my mom unfortunately forgot to tell me that it was a joke for uh, like five years or something. And so before when I would think about that, I would feel like a victim. I would feel anger at my brother. I would feel frustration at my mom. I had a hard time putting forgiveness in the mix, blah, 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 blah. So then I like ascended. I raised my vibe, I raised my ability to see from this broader perspective. So then I forgave the brother that told me these things. I forgave the mother that forgot to tell me that it was a joke. I, I made amends, I forgave, I moved forward, I, I healed through that, okay? So then fast forward to the next level up. This is where I feel like I am in this now, which I feel like is what's coming up for the collective. That's why I share it. So the next level is now I see it from this even broader perspective. So now I wasn't a victim. I'm actually seeing me being told these things. And I'm seeing me with so much love and compassion for the little girl that was told that she was adopted when she wasn't. I'm also feeling and seeing it to the, you know, for the little boy, teenager, that was telling me these things and how much he may, he may have been feeling. I was tap, I've been able to like tap into his energy and his intention, you know, Tap into my mother and her intention, just being lighthearted, playing around, just joking. Both of them just joking, you know, and how it wasn't a funny joke, you know, it, it wasn't. But I'm seeing it now as, as these three different entities of humans, myself, my mom, and my brother. And I'm also seeing us as like this one unit of human, you know, because we're all one. Um, so as I'm seeing it, what I'm able to do now, and I wasn't intentionally doing this, I'm just noticing that this is kind of what came up and through, is that I'm witnessing this experience and all these other uh, experiences, traumas, whatever, with so much compassion for me. So much more compassion for me. Like before, I had felt like empathy for myself. Oh God, that was so loud. Sorry, y'all. I just got done teaching and I never drank any water. So I'm like, oh, I'm purged. Anyway, I had, I had felt sorry for myself. Um, I never felt for myself in retrospect the way I now do after this weekend. And it is now 
a way it's now there's now this way that I can see myself that is it, compassion is the only way that I'm seeing this to, to describe it and I share this because what I feel like is happening is to have these opportunities to see our childhood to see the way our parents treated us or didn't the way they acted, the way they didn't act, the way they were there or the way we, they weren't there. Whatever, the way it was in school, the way our lives were, to be able to see all of that stuff with compassion. So much love and compassion. Radical compassion for the I am that was involved in those experiences in the past. A lot of those things to give compassion for, which would then lead to like more forgiveness, more grace. Sometimes people have a real hard time with that. Like for real. Um, there is a lot of anger that can go with that. Um, like a lot. And I share that because we're also made to feel those angering feelings. <laughs> like I can look back at that experience of being told that I was adopted from another country and um, I can feel anger and resentment and all of those things and those aren't bad however for me now the overarching feel around it is like inundated with the consciousness of compassion so that if I you know like I cried a little bit I experienced the thing like I emoted like it came out there was still a density in my body that that was able to flow out as I could see the things from my past as I continue to forgive myself for the way I reacted to my traumas because the way I reacted to my traumas were to abuse myself through drugs distractions, basically, you know, sex, relationships, drugs, alcohol, television, video games, you name it, anything to distract. Um, I abused myself and then I also abused others. I was mean, I was resentful, I was angry, I was depressed, I would lash out. I was just mean, completely unkind. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance that comes along when, when we did the wrong, like when we did the wrong thing, when we messed up, when we hurt someone else. And we will justify it, we ignore it, we make mm, kind of amends by maybe drugging and distracting or like, I'm not even going to open that closet when I was a raging bitch. I'm not even going to look back at that version of me, right? It's coming up now. Whatever it is you did in your past that you are so not proud of, including what others did to you that were the igniters of that expression of you are also going to be coming up if they're not already. So it's like the things that made me feel alone and unloved and like I wasn't good enough was the story that I believe that I was given up by a family and adopted and not loved by that family that adopted me because I still was different. None of those are truths, but my experience led me to believe that. So now that whole thing came up, right? That's what's going to be happening. We will get many opportunities to make um, big amends, big atonements, big forgivenesses to ourselves and those who caused us to be the way we are or the way we were. And I see why this is happening. I see it in the greater good. I see the next level, if you will. I, I use the word levels. It's not like that, but I just can't. Human words aren't other than levels will be appropriate. But it's like, if I am in a space where I have completely forgiven like my brother and my mother for this thing, right? And you'll have to forgive me. I was out in the woods all weekend and I got like some bug bites on my arm and I'm like, hmm, it feels good to scratch them. Anyway, I'm not gonna be mad at the bugs. I'm not gonna be mad at myself for scratching them in the past. Anyway, but the way I'm seeing this to be a service for like the next step 
at least for me, is, and the collective actually is what I'm saying it to be of service for the collective, is when I can completely be not only forgiving of like my mom and my brother in this example, not only am I forgiving of them, but I love them so much for being the way they were to me, for telling me what they told me, for giving me all the gifts of all the traumas that all parents and brothers and sisters and the media and all those things give. I can see all the gifts that they were for me to be like, yes. And it starts to strengthen my self love, right? My self uh, feeling, my feeling of completeness because I'm not feeling like I'm lacking anywhere. And when I feel complete radical forgiveness for myself, for all the ways that I reacted, not only when I was a kid or a teenager or a young adult or last week, just saying, because I remembered that I am the ones who traumatized me and that I am a part of that collective consciousness that we are all living through, right? It's like the ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. It's acknowledging that I am you and you are me. And in that, I helped create the space of your pain and your discomfort, you know, and I love you for going through it. And I'm sorry for my role. And please forgive me for that. And thank you. I have appreciation for you going through what you did. When I can live in that ho'oponopono consciousness, right, for all of life's experiences in any, in any timelines, what it's going to be of service for is as we move into the next transition, as we start to more fully integrate the fifth dimensional consciousness on earth, right, the more light we bring in, the more darkness that, that's just there gets to dissolve away. We can't dissolve it by hating it and telling it that it needs to go away. Nope, doesn't work like that. Literally, it won't work energetically speaking. We get to love that density. We get to love those traumas. We get to love all of it as the gifts that they were and are. So what I see happening is as more of the collective clicks into a higher vibrational consciousness as more of the news comes out on the elite and what the program has been doing and and just all those all those things that can be viewed as conspiracy theories whatever a lot of it's just like real like it's just what has been happening so we are going to start to see oh wow, I didn't realize that you were a pedophile and that I didn't know, but I was monetarily supporting the entity that was supporting pedophilia. Oh, snap. You know, that the religion that I was, you know, indoctrinated with that, wow, they've been a huge, a huge supporter of things that I am really not in alignment with. In fact, I was, I was a victim of that myself. And now I didn't realize that I was supporting that. So we're going to start to see things real close to home in our belief system, which is just a belief system. We're going to start to see things that are really close to our belief system and that we will have many opportunities to feel really guilty, feel ashamed, feel bad, um, to feel like a victim, to feel like we should blame the other people or things around us, to project outward, to reject any type of love and support from ourselves or others. Like, I see all this potential. And the potential that I see really rising up and blooming the biggest is using the potential of forgiveness and compassion. And it's, I see it being one of the struggles. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like all the COVID mask stuff. You know, you have some people that are like, wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, you're killing people. And then there are others that are like, the mask is stupid and you will kill yourself if you wear it. Completely different perspectives. The way I want to share the, my perspective and that is that neither are right and neither are wrong. Period. If you want to wear a mask, you wear your mask. If you feel like it will save lives, then wear the mask. If you feel like wearing the mask is redundant and it's toxic for your body, don't wear the mask. However, people have been judging and fighting already and we can't hide it. We could hide before our religion, 
right? We could hide before the things that we would put behind the closed door so no one would see the true anger, or the true resentment, or the true fear, or the true judgment that I had. No one could see all of my own internal things. Now it's coming out where we will either be wearing a mask or not. Before it'd be like, well, if you are this color, you're going to be judged. If you have this color eyes, you're going to be gasped we had all of these ways, but now it's, it's just come to like, it doesn't matter your culture, your color, your religion, your anything. It's if you're wearing a mask or not. Right. And it's to the point where it's like, if you wear a mask, then you are either saving lives or you believe in a system that's not real type of thing. And if we can live <laughs> in that space of ho'oponopono, like what you do is you are me and I am you and you are going to express yourself by wearing a mask and I am not, or vice versa. And being able to honor that and still be able to move through life in that space of radical compassion, radical creativity. How do I then move forward creatively from my heart while still being in alignment with my divine source? And being in honorance of all beings everywhere outside of myself and the way they choose to express themselves. Because every way we express ourselves is based on what we have lived before. It's based on our lived experience, our culture, and our belief system. Period. So what's going to come up is all this, all that, our lived experiences and our belief system and all that stuff is getting ready to come up and be shaken around like a big handful of dice for us to be, for it to be thrown out and us to look at it and be like, all right, we have a new game to play with. I didn't know that I had all of those faces on each of those die and there was a handful of them. And now it's been all shaken up for me to see what I'm actually working with now. How can I forgive myself for playing poor hands before? Whatever it is, you know what I mean? That is what I see coming in, is all the stuff from our past that will question and bring to light our way of being so that we can ascend through that, transcend it, and live from our heart in relationship so that I can still love the person that chooses to not wear a mask or I can still choose to love the person who does wear a mask so I can still love the me who may be voted for the party that supports human trafficking that I didn't know of at the time when I cast that ballot I had no idea so basically in that ballot that I cast I supported human trafficking. I didn't know that. I get to atone and make amends with that experience that I had, that choice that I made. And then how do I make a choice now moving forward that is no longer holding the judgments on that that just came to light in the first place? It's like a fast processing type of thing. Things are going to be coming up and be aware of it. Give it as much love and compassion, forgiveness and acceptance, love as you can, and figure out how to creatively connect from your heart to yourself, to others, whether you agree with them or not, because it's all about relationships. It's all about the heart. It's all about love. It's all about love. And I see what is happening in the cosmic realm is really supportive for all of us to start moving at this faster pace in time because we're remembering that time is only now. So we don't have to be like, oh, well, it's going to take me five years to process all the stuff from my childhood. Nope. Unless you believe it and then it will and that's totally cool too. But otherwise, not really. Not, not, not really at all actually. So like I'm putting this out there as an encouragement to one, Reach out if you need support, first and foremost. Reach out to a sponsor. Reach out to a support system. Reach out to a safe person. Reach out to Promise Resource Network. It's a great, great, great nonprofit free organization for reals. Promise Resource Network. Love them. Um, but reach out for support because you're not alone. But I feel that we all... <laughs> are gonna have more opportunities to see all the stuff from our childhood and our past, the way we did wrong 
the way we were wrongly done and how we have grown through it and to like give ourselves some like love and acknowledgement and celebration. Like it's not made, it's not made to be hard. It's not, we are, we can get through this like with so much love and so much joy, so much creativity that we can start to implement the true meaning of Tantra in our healing as a collective that we can find pleasure while we're healing, that we can find the pleasure in the pain and the sorrow because it's temporary, that we can find pleasure in the temporary nature of life itself, you know, and we can find pleasure in grieving the temporary nature of life because we can now grieve and what a gift that is. Seeing our past from the broader neutral perspective while maintaining an outpouring of so much love for all parties involved will let us will pay it will it allows us to ascend with more grace and joy and ease it paves the path so much clearer because here's the thing, this energy is coming in. The earth is shifting now. It is. We are collectively getting ready to embark on a new earth terrain. So that means that I don't have time to be judging people. And I don't have the time to be dealing with people judging me. So I just don't even deal with that. I just don't put judgment in the mix. The thing is, is that I still have memories. And the memories are what I tend to judge. So now when the memories come up, I acknowledge that they're memories of a timeline that's happening now or that really never is happening. Either way, same Z's, <laughs> right? So how do I view it? The next few months are gonna be energetically a hoot. Boy, howdy. So much space for growth, promise. I want to encourage everyone to ride this wave. And whenever you start to feel the struggle, whenever you start to feel the judgment, the victimization, whenever you start to feel like you gotta project to make yourself feel better and blame someone else for your own dissonance, take a deep breath. Remember that that person that you're hating on is you. Remember that the person that you're judging is you, whether you're looking in the mirror or you're looking at your neighbor, same sees looking at the you that you were as a child and give yourself so much love. See all the good that you did. See all the light that you brought. Even though no one maybe ever acknowledged the light that you were as a kid, you know you were because all children are, right? When we're born, we're made of love. Like we're still made of love. But when we're kids, we're this like energetic lighthouse. And a lot of times that gets ignored. It gets stifled. It gets punished. Please look back on, on your, your Rolodex of memories and see all the, the love that you had, all the light that you brought, all the joy you brought, all the creativity that you had and call that into you now because it's still there. Let it be expressed and let it live in a bigger adult body. It's safer now. Let all of those aspects and timelines of you even the future ones that you may not know about, but you do know about, you know, the future aspect of you that's already done all the work and has loved so fiercely, all the love and compassion and the gifts that you've given in your old, old age, in your old embodiment. Give yourself so much acknowledgement and love and compassion for all the love and light that you have been, that you have shared, that you will give and that you will share. And, and let all of that energy that comes out to, to those timelines of what we call the past and the future, let that really reverberate and come into you now. And be that loving, compassionate, no holds barred, loving, loving, loving human that we all are. You will be inspiring. You will be the way shower. We're all way showers in our own right. We're all light beings. <laughs> We're all star seeds on some level, whether we consciously acknowledge it or we, or we don't. 
We're made of cosmic material. We are star seeds. We are stardust. We are stars. <laughs> we are the universe. And we're made in a human body to live in love. Now I feel like we're going to get a lot of opportunities to kind of test that water with ourselves from our past experiences via childhood. Because once we start to really make amends with those childhood things, we can start to then be it outwardly to others as we move about life. So I wanted to hop on here and share all of that that I feel is coming in. I haven't looked at the planetary placement. I feel like I might be spot on on this one because it's been coming in really loud and clear for me. So I wanted to share. Um, I hope it's of service. I hope that you, whoever you are that watches this, it will be the perfect time. If you watch this a year from now, it's still the perfect time. You're not too late ever, never, ever too late. If you find this inspiring, share it, please. Um, you know, if you're like, that girl, that girl says a thing. Um, if you need more support in a group setting, um, reach out to N Promise Resource Network. You can find them on Facebook, excuse me, as I burp two times. Um, you can find them on Facebook and follow them. You can see me teaching all types of classes from body, mind, spirit to life and balance to a spirituality class. We do a creative class. Um, and you can tune into those free opportunities. And if you want some one-on-one -on -one guidance on how you can ascend and transcend and heal and see these aspects of timelines in a quantum, from that quantum perspective, so you see all of this clearly and know what the gift is so that you can now move forward and create this new earth from your heart, then please reach out to me. I love new clients. I'm starting to accept new clients um, within the past couple of months. Thanks, COVID. Um, but we can work together to clear your path as you're ascending, wherever that is, whatever that is, to broaden your spiritual path, to clear out maybe anything that's growing on your path that you couldn't see before. Whether it's something in your mental space that's just too loud, you can't shut that off, or maybe energetically you feel something's off, you're a little bit more empathetic than you want to feel, you keep feeling everyone else's vibration that you can't tend to your own. Holla, it's your girl. You know, if you're having a lot of emotions and you're just, you're, you're like, I keep feeling depression, I keep feeling anxiety, and I'm having a hard time in stillness and meditation and reach out. This is what I, this is what I'm here for, is to guide humanity through this sacred ascension in this very now timeline. My intention is for us to collectively create a new future with, with like humanity at the helm, like life at the helm. And to do that, we get to honor all living beings. And all living beings may be doing things that we don't like. So we got to start with ourselves in like that for real true forgiveness way. So what's going to be coming up, like I said, are many opportunities to um, add more forgiveness, add more compassion to ourselves and to others. <sighs> yeah, that's what I got. Um... You know, may all of these days find us with ease. May all of these days greet us with some compassion. May we greet these days with curiosity and wonder and an open mind and a willingness and a willingness to do what we need to do, what we're made to do. We're made to be in love, in light, to share and to create. We're made to be well. We are going to get many opportunities to be all of that stuff that we are divinely righted to be. We get to be able to hear our own voice, our own truth, our own inner knowing, our own inner sounds. And we'll be able to share them in confidence and resilience and strength and honor and and like a healthy pride. Not like, I'm right, you're wrong. But like, no, I know this. This is, this is my truth. You know, it's my truth. It goes beyond belief. We'll start to have a new faith in ourself and in turn in all life, in other humans. We are not made to be in fear of our brothers and sisters. We're not. 
That's not in our nature. We're not made to hate. We're not made to feel animosity toward anyone that's expressing themselves in a different way or looking different or practicing a different cultural belief. Like that's not what we're made to do. We've just been conditioned to do all that shit. It's so silly. So what we're going to have, I feel, is a lot of opportunities to clear all that out and to be the truly unconditionally loving beings that we are. It's a process and it's a never ending process. We're never going to be done at all. We just now get to do it like as this big collective energetic sheath around the earth because the earth herself is moving so much that this energy of consciousness of the earth is moving up and out of her. So we and our bodies are getting this energy root up and we're getting it crowned down. And it's coming in like that. What it's doing is it's coming in and meeting at the center, at the heart. So anything that was mucking that up, that um, was preventing a full expression of divine, unconditional love for self or others will be coming up to light. It'll come into the awareness. And it is coming up not to judge, not to be ridiculed for, not to ridicule self or others for but to bring it up to light and like, thank you for coming up in gratitude and to clear it, to just let it dissolve out so that the heart is the area that we will live from. It's the fifth dimensional realm. It's the new earth. It's heaven on earth, void of time. It's just now. That is the consciousness that I feel is dropping in big time or coming up big time. We're a toric field that's literally coming into our central channel from all directions because it's energy. I usually just go like this though, just because I move my hands and that's the way it goes because otherwise I do this and it kind of looks a little bit weird. Anyway. So yeah, that was my YouTube <laughs> download. Um, I hope it was of service. Please like it, comment if you have any questions that I could answer to inspire me to do another video. I love to do it. I've, like I said, I've just been very busy doing a lot of other videos and virtual classes, um, but I would love it. I would love it if you subscribed and if you shared this with anyone, like I said, that you would feel it to be of service for. So I hope you all are doing well and that you're enjoying all of your nows and that you can, um, make through make it through these days with as much grace and ease that you would give a newborn baby or to give a little toddler as they're walking and learning to walk you know we're learning to walk in a new way in a new light in a new embodiment and it's releasing all notions of time so any ties we have to the past are being cut. We will still have an awareness of them. We still know that they created us and we have gratitude for them, but they will no longer be the dangling parts of us that we are dragging along, trying to make it into the future. So enjoy your nows. Enjoy the consciousness that you're vibrating in. Enjoy wherever you are. A mantra came to me today, an affirmation, and it was, I am all that I am, and I am enough. I am all that I am, and I am enough. I am all that I am because of what I've been through and what I've lived through. And I am enough. So you are all that you are, and you are enough. And everyone out in this world is all that they are. And they too are enough in whatever way they're doing it, the way they're expressing it, the consciousness that they're in, the timelines that they're in, the belief system that they're in. Whether I agree with it or not, it doesn't mean it's a game I want to play. It means that I get to create another game, create another reality that's more in alignment with my highest good. And I know I'm not going to be alone as I continue to create this. So come play with me, y'all. Um, anyway, so remember, I am all that I am and I am enough and you are loved. You are loved. You are so, so loved. 
and I thank you for being here playing this earth game with me. So thank you for taking the time and tuning in and checking this out. You can click on one of the links below. Um, you can find my website there and all the other ways to follow me on the socials because that's just so fun. So I look forward to seeing you all again. Many blessings, y'all. So much love and peace. Okay, bye.